On this episode of Trying Something New, we are going to talk about homeschooling, unschooling, and world schooling. And why we took our kids out of school. So everyone asks us how we educate our kids, because three years ago we took three of our kids out of public school to live our own life, our own dream. We had the house, we had all the stuff, and we realized we weren't happy, something was missing. And this is how our travel vlog came along, as we documented the whole process of selling everything, moving out, and starting to travel the world. And in that, we had to figure out how to educate the kids. Which brings us to this video today, where we're gonna go over homeschooling, which we started out doing, unschooling, which we ended up doing, which is also parlayed into world schooling. If you've never heard of unschooling and world schooling, we didn't either. And as soon as we were exposed to this alternate style of learning, our minds were absolutely blown. So I'll give you a little backstory on our kids in school. So our oldest is 11 now. She went through kindergarten, first and second grade. I'm Nixon J. Phelan and I hope you're inspired. Our second daughter went to two years of school. My name, my name is Gaisa Phelan and it's my first time. And our youngest was in preschool. With mama. Dada. Say mama. Dada. So this was our experience. We always woke up running around crazy, trying to get everybody's lunches ready, trying to get the kids out of bed in time, trying to make it out the door in time, trying to get to the school in time, fighting the, the school police that we couldn't make a left turn to get in the school. As soon as you got in there, you couldn't park because there's only 25 parking spots for 700 people dropping off their kids there was every day. There two schools and one little parking lot in between. It was like a rat race every day. And I'm sure anybody that has their kids in school, you know what we're talking about. So, you know, it was, it, it was just four years of this. And I'm like, does everybody else experience this? Why does this seem not fun, you know? And then, so this was our kids' experience in school. Nixon, our oldest. She was, and she excelled in school. She was a teacher's pet. She loved, she was very competitive and she loved being the top of the class. But what we did notice was every time I pick her up in the afternoon, she would have a meltdown. Like literally, everybody gets in the car, hey guys, close the door, and she'd just be mad either at her brother or sister. Something would make her angry, and I just couldn't understand what was going on. This went on for a while. So much that I had a therapist come in and talk to us about what could possibly be going on because the teachers, yeah, Nixon had a great day. Like there was never any indication of anything that went wrong during the day, yet get in the car, and it was the same story. So what she figured and explained was Nixon likes to just go through the day and no matter what happens, she bottles it, bottles it, bottles it, and she's smiling. And as soon as she gets into the car with me, which was her safe place, she would just unleash. And whatever bad things may have happened throughout the day that she bottled now exploded. Which broke my heart because I'm like, what's going on during the day that, you know, is affecting her like that? So that was Nixon's story. So then we have Skylar that, <laughs> that was Nixon. <laughs> so then we have Skylar, completely different child. We call her our butterfly child, our unicorn, our she, star child. She does everything on her own time. She walked late, she talked late, she couldn't care less what anybody else was doing. She never wanted to follow the crowd. So I knew school was gonna be a challenge for her. She wasn't interested in learning the ABCs. She wasn't interested in all the things I did with Nixon when she was her age. So when she got into kindergarten, she turned five a month before she started kindergarten. So she was really like an old four-year-old going into kindergarten. I'm five years old and, and I'm Saiwa and... So the kindergarten teacher that she had was the one that Nixon had. What she was saying was, yeah, I see Sky. you know, she's not really into doing the work. She loves what she loves, but she doesn't want to be conformed into what everybody else is doing in the classroom. She had her own agenda. One of the things that they did, because she wasn't excelling at the rate they wanted her to excel at, is they start keeping her in from recesses. Mm -hmm. And Skylar is the most outdoorsy, nature-loving, fresh air girl you ever meet. And to take her recesses away from her because she wasn't yeah. doing her worksheets fast enough was pretty crazy. I started to hear a lot of stuff from the teacher saying, you know, Sky, she's, you know, she would show me the workbook and there was more drawing than there was writing and she wanted to see more writing. And 
As the year went on, she kind of told me, I think Sky should repeat kindergarten because she's not really gonna be prepared for first grade. So I agreed. I'm like, that's totally fine. Let's have her get a whole nother year of kindergarten, really get an understanding of everything and feel comfortable. So she did. She had another year of kindergarten. Take two. And it was <laughs> different teacher. We used a different teacher this time. It was pretty much the same story. <laughs> you know, they even, told me, I think she may have ADHD. So I had her tested for ADHD. She, she was like 95 percentile in some areas, average in other areas, but there was nothing wrong with her. The way I like to explain it is, she doesn't fit in the box of what school says she has to fit in. And so they were trying to clip her wings and break her spirit to get her into this box. And luckily we noticed that early on so that we could do something about it and make sure that she didn't go through life not being her true authentic well, think, self. And thinking there's something wrong. Right. <clears throat> because she has, she has something beautiful to bring to the world. And just because it's not brought out in the school system, we can bring it out in other ways. Uh, I think halfway through that year is when we started to travel and started to think maybe school isn't the right thing for our kids, you know? But, you know, while you're in school, you don't really know what other options are out there. You know, you kind of just feel like this is what everybody's doing, so this is what I need to do. Our kids go to school. We went to school, although I hated school. I uh, just did enough. I did pretty good in school, but I just did enough to get by and not get noticed, you know? I never applied myself. I never really tried hard. Graduated 3.2, but <laughs> I mean, to what? To what? Onto what? Yeah. Like After seeing Sky in school, I realized that's exactly how I was. I didn't excel in school because I hated school. I hated being locked in a room all day long. I would cut school. I was not a good student at all. I missed so many days. I got kicked out of high school. Um, <laughs> so I can relate to Sky and not being interested in that environment. Like I was saying, we started traveling, we met some other families and heard about world schooling and unschooling. And I seriously, I go, what the heck are people doing? Like it's, you didn't even know, I didn't even know it existed. So if you're watching this, there is an amazing way to teach your kids and expose them to amazing things that really bring out their true potential. And the huge catalyst for us was we were in Rome uh, exploring the Colosseum. We got to walk in where the gladiators walked in. Goosebumps were like all over us because the energy was so insane. And we're getting these emails and text messages from the school saying that we missed 21 days and we better get our butts home because the kids might not graduate that year because we got to do some worksheets. You know, we got to get in these classes and do some worksheets. And here we are walking into the Colosseum and I think both of us just looked at each other and go, we're, we're, done. we're done. Like, this is so we're silly. We're, we're, we're exploring the world, learning and growing and enriching our lives and seeing these cultural icons of history. But we got to get back to do a worksheet. Yeah. There's so much more. I think that's when we realized there is so much more. We don't have to live in the box anymore of what we think we're supposed to do. So ultimately, what we realized is school is a one size fits all. And we got three different sizes. So when we took the kids out, I cannot tell you how amazing it was, the freedom. But they'll never take our freedom! That we felt that you no longer have to live by the clock. We are business owners, we have our own film production company, so we do have some flexibility in our schedule. And so it really, really worked well for us to be able to have them with us all the time and start our journey of unschooling. We initially thought we were gonna be homeschooling, but we realized pretty quickly that doing a curriculum and mimicking the teacher role in the house was not working very well. So that's how we got into unschooling, which is a self-directed way of learning for the kids. So you no longer have to be the teacher where you're telling them what to do. We are kind of the facilitators helping them learn whatever they wanna learn about. We provide the resources for them to dive as deep as they want to dive into a subject or topic. And then when they're done with that, we move on to the next thing. Because just like you and me, when we feel like we've learned enough on something, I don't think that we need to go another three months on that topic if we're good. If we're good, let's move on and learn something else. And if we need to get deeper into that later on, we can always come back to it and readdress it. What I love about unschooling is you really get to individualize each kid's learning style. So the way Nixon learns, she can be into whatever she's doing, little projects, and she loves learning and writing a report about it. She wants to be tested all the time. Yeah, she wants me to <laughs> test her all the time, which is cool. I'll do whatever she wants. And then Skylar, on the other hand, she'll get lost in a book about wildlife, marine life. Weird but true, she loves weird She but loves true, weird so. but true and gross but true. And so she knows millions of facts probably by now from all of this reading 
that literally no matter where we travel, she'll tell us something about either an animal or when we went snorkeling in Bali, she spotted a lionfish and nearly lost it, screaming lionfish. And I'm thinking, I don't even know what a lionfish looks like. <laughs> and then another time we're snorkeling and she sees a stonefish, which apparently is one of the most deadliest fish in the world. But I had no idea. And that's because we let her explore to the depths of whatever she's into and she gets lost in it. And that's what kids do. You know, when you let them free to explore whatever it is they're interested in, it's amazing how far they'll go. I, d I found myself the other day, we're watching TV and I go, Sky, what kind of monkey is that? And she told me where, what kind of monkey it was, where it was from, what it eats, all kinds of crazy stuff. But if you take her back to the school setting, the teacher said there's something wrong with her because she's not doing what they want to do because she never really found her true, true way until we set her free. And now the kid is like an Encyclopedia Britannica, if you know what that is. That was our way of learning back in the day. The resources that children have today is insane, everything is at their fingertips. It's actually so fun to get lost in something with the kids and learning. We learn just as much as the kids do on stuff that we didn't even know existed yeah. or... One thing that I love also is we don't learn from 7 to 3 p.m. and then we're done. We learn all day, every day, all night, every night. The other night we were watching uh, The Perfect Storm and the kids uh, wanted to know about hurricanes. So it was like, like 10 o'clock at night when the movie was over. So we laid in bed for another hour researching hurricanes and how they form and what they do and why they're, and that was our school. I mean, we're still learning all day, every day. And it was just amazing. It's really cool. Another thing that we saw that really opened our eyes was Prince EA had a video about the people versus the education system. If you haven't seen it, we will put a link down below. It actually made me cry the first time I saw it because he it breaks it down visually. The education system and how things have changed over the past 150 years. Everything but the education system. We ran into Prince EA at VidCon last year and I got a chance to thank oh. him personally. <laughs> so cool. I got a chance to thank him personally and was almost crying telling him, you literally changed our lives because your video made me understand my daughter who was struggling and struggling in school, in kindergarten. Yeah. And if I were to keep her on that path, she would be the goldfish that was supposed to climb trees, which is never gonna happen. I mean, growing up, my parents, my teachers thought I was slow, thought I, uh, I should be held back. But then music came, like conscious music came, and that just galvanized me. That just inspired me so much that I wanted to learn about everything that they're talking about in this rap, you know? I wanted to learn these words, so my vocabulary increased. Yeah. And that transitioned into me sitting in front of the class and engaging with my teachers. And, but it wasn't the chalk and talk method, it was the music method. And there's so many kids, they don't get activated. They live their whole lives yep. thinking that they're, they're below where they are or that intelligence is getting straight A's. And so I created that video just to try to change that mentality. Well, you don't so know what you that, did. It was <laughs> like... Everybody, dude. Everybody. Go fish, well, you not gonna You gotta see this. It's like our yeah. middle daughter. And when it gets me emotional thinking about that, because if you don't peel all of that away and understand what's going on with your kid, why are they not doing good in school? It's just because it's not meant for them. You gotta take a step back and think about it. All kids are not made to fit into one thing. If everybody got the same prescription pill, for a sickness that they had, the world would be a mess. And that's where we're at with our education system. Another thing that happens in school is the labels. You're labeled whether you're in a class, a slow class, or you're in a gifted class. But I know for me, I was in a label of, I, they couldn't figure me out. I, they would pull me out of class, still can't figure me out, but they would, they would pull me out of class. Sandy, can you come into the hallway, please? And there would be a person standing there. Can you come with me? And they'd take me somewhere and give me some random test to try and figure out, I guess, maybe what my strengths and weaknesses were. Who the heck knows? But I remember that made me feel so uncomfortable. Why am I the only one being pulled out and doing these tests, you know? And so if my mom knew, back then about all of these alternate styles of learning, I probably would have never done with all that where I had this inferior complex, my confidence level was probably not where it should have been. And so you spend your whole life trying to figure out like, what's going on, you know? And being able to, you know, understand that when your kids are young and not put them through that whole stigma and everything and the struggles that will ensue it's just, it's just natural, you know? There's the good, good kids and the bad kids. Are the bad kids really bad? Maybe, probably not, you know? 
But you don't know that until you give them other opportunities and then they actually shine. So I think back then they didn't have a unicorn test. If they were to have a unicorn test now and give it to you, they would have figured out what the heck was going on with Sandy. Oh, darn it. <laughs> we got one more kid to talk about. Let's talk about Ryder. So Ryder, Ryder is six years old right now and he would be in kindergarten. So what would he be doing? Learning his ABCs, learning how to write, learning how to read. But what Ryder absolutely loves doing is building building, creating, taking things apart, putting them back together. It's insane. He, I put him in engineering for kids classes to see if he liked that. And he, it was like his mind was blown. He couldn't wait to go to, I had him in two classes a week. He could not wait to go to class. He just loved it. So the goal is with these kids to help them find out what they're interested in and what they're passionate about. So that when they are 18, 19, a little bit older, they're kind of like on their way already. And they don't go to school for a job they think they should have to make some money and then be in their 30s and going, what the heck am I doing here? Because I think we've all been there. I don't mean Sandy have been there. We weren't into our mid 30s until we kind of figured out what we wanted to do and what our purpose in life was. And if we can help these kids bypass 15 years of being lost and doing stuff that's unfulfilling, I think that's a great win for everybody. And hearing Billie Eilish's story and her brother, they were homeschooled and just did music all day, every day. They would say, well, did your mom have a bedtime for you? If we were playing music, no. Their parents knew what was up, you know? It's like, if I put you in school, you're not gonna really have time to do music. And if you do, it's not gonna be enough to get you where they are now. <laughs> You know, to be a musical genius at 17 years old, probably earlier than that because her album was released when she was yeah. 17. But to have that musical depth is only because she put hours and hours and hours yeah. and hours into crafting her skill set because she was allowed to do that and she didn't have to go take a class that she wasn't interested in and now her music changes the world. So we don't have any of this <laughs> figured out. <laughs> what, what, what? We know that we're on the right path because school was definitely not a good fit. So if anybody out there is struggling, you know, the kids are struggling, you're not sure what's going on, you're getting all these bad reports from the teacher, maybe school is not the right fit for your kid. And it is very, very hard at first to understand, grasp, and accept the process yeah. of de-schooling and getting out of the mindset of my kids have to be to a certain point, by a certain point, by a certain point, and if they're not there, oh my God, the world's gonna end because it's not. Everything's gonna be cool. Your kids, you have to trust your kids. That's the biggest thing that we found out in this lifestyle and this way of learning and growing together is you have to trust the kids. Come on, I'll catch you. Okay. Carrie! <laughs> the kids are gonna dive as deep as they need to dive into something. And then when they're done, they're gonna move on to the next thing. And that's okay. If they wanna do guitar lessons for three months and be out, then they're, then they're done, you know? Like, you have to trust that they know what they're into because think about you. When do you discover what you're into? When you're really, really passionate about it and the time is right. We've built a whole film production company on passion. We never went to school one time to learn how to do videos. And it was made, YouTube <laughs> University. <laughs> and we Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and we made a very successful career out of it. And we're still learning and growing and just as passionate on day 10,000 as we were on day we're one. We're lifelong learners. So it never stops. All day long we're learning. All day long we're doing stuff that grows our brains, that helps us grow that it just never ends. It's all day, every day, at night, whenever. There's always opportunities to learn. So let us know what you guys do for your schooling if the kids aren't in school. And if they are in school and you're struggling, let us know because if there's anything we can do with from our experience to maybe help you guys out, we would love, love, love to do that. That's why we're making this video because we get so many comments and so many questions about what we do. And, you know, honestly, World schooling is a whole nother realm in, in addition to unschooling where you're learning from the world and actually seeing it hands on, touching, feeling, seeing, experiencing. I know our kids absolutely love that. And we've met so many other families traveling, doing world schooling, where we just put up a video from Bali where we taught a video class to 15 kids that live all over the world. And to see the passion they were from eight to 13 years old, these kids. They actually might've been a seven year old in there. And they, the passion they had for video was oh my, damn, unbelievable. I wish, I wish somebody would have noticed this in me when I was younger. Serious. You know, so that's a, a good example of unschooling, world schooling is wherever you are, 
make an education out of it. You know, you can learn from your surroundings, from whatever it is, the people around you. There's always something to learn and grow. Oh. And in closing, I'm so we'll, passionate. We'll about wrap it. this up, guys, because yeah. Uh, nobody really has it 100% figured out. You know, I've done so much research and reading articles online and reading books and listening to podcasts. And it's always a constant state of evolution. The kids are always changing. You're always changing. The country's always changing. The world's always changing. So it's always this perpetual state of we're figuring it out. We're growing. But that keeps your brain active and keeps you engaged into what's going on with the kids, yourself, and everything else. So. To wrap it up, guys, get out there, trust your gut. If your gut's telling you something's not working with your school system, trust it, try something new. And a wise man once told us, if, it, if you try it and it doesn't work out, you can always go right back to where you left off, but at least you gave it a shot and you tried something new. So don't live with regrets, try something new.